what the School of Art History, people like Regal, Gombrich, and Chris did, was to analyze the living beholder. Right. How do they respond to art? And that is a terrific approach to bridging art and science because you can really do experiments to see how do we respond to illusions. And what most people didn't realize at the time is that the information we take in is a fraction of what's out there. So we don't really reconstruct. We reconstruct. We don't see reality as it is. We reconstruct it in our own brain. The brain is a creativity machine. And so there are rules that determine how things are put together. Those are inborn. But in addition, we have what is called top-down processing. We have memories of previous experience of people, people we've seen, works of art we've seen, and we use that to compare what's coming in with what we've experienced before. So there's a rich creative process going on that they could begin to describe in some detail. Mm. But are you more interested, in, for example, in the artist, the, crea the creativity of the artist and, and the unconscious of there, or are you more interested in uh, someone like yourself who appreciates art who the, and who has, quote, the beholder stare? I'm interested in both. Um, you know, I'm a scientist, as you yeah. well know, and I've tried to take a somewhat different approach than uh, an art historian might take. I've taken a reductionist approach to this. And that is, a reductionist takes a large problem that they like and takes a simple example of it and tries to understand it deeply. Right. So I simplified my task in, in two ways. One is, I focused on a limited aspect of art, only portraiture, because we have a terrific understanding right, right. of the face. And two, only these three painters. And then Alois Regal helped me because he pointed out, again in a reductionist step, that the way to understand how art and science can be bridged is to focus on the beholder. There are lots of things he could have picked on, but mm. focusing on how you and I respond to work. So it gives us a tractable problem. What's the biological aspect of this? There are people who have problems with different aspects of the beholder share. Right. In the simplest case, you can be face blind, right. so you can't see portraits at all, right. okay? So we know the regions that are involved in that, they're in the temporal lobe. Or you can be autistic, so you might see the painting perfectly well, but you don't respond emotionally to it because you can't put yourself in another person's place. So at different points along the line, we have a pretty good beginning of a biology of things because we've seen disorders interfere with one or another function. Mm -hmm. You yourself pointed out we've learned an enormous amount about normal functioning from disorders and that's the case with the beholder share as well. Yeah.